Welcome back to the PCS Journal, everyone. I'm Al Rochelle. Wow, what a September. Hurricane Irma, man, did it do a number on us psychologically. A lot of folks without AC for a long time. Didn't know if you know this, but Pinellas County Schools had 17 shelters that were open for all of us to attend if we needed to, and they served some 25,000 people. Well, Dave Cook, one of our staff members here, had a chance to actually serve in one of those schools, Dunedin Elementary, and shows us what it's like for those three days they were serving those people in desperate need. More than 50 Pinellas County Schools administrative staff, head plant operators, and food service managers report to Dunedin Elementary at 6 a.m. Saturday morning for shelter duty. High Point Elementary Principal Michael Feeney is our shelter manager. So as a shelter manager, we have a team that we put together that comes from all different aspects of the school district. We have elementary, middle school, and high school, as well as a variety of different um, district offices. And, and our job is to come together as a team ensure the safety and the support of, of our community. Dunedin Elementary Principal Carrie Wyatt and her team are proud to host residents evacuated from Clearwater and Dunedin. We're given training every year on it. We know that there's always the possibility. So for me, it was really just get back into that mode and, and pull the things that we know we're supposed to do and just make it happen. And that was important because people were relying on us. They came in scared. Hello. Hello. <laughs> And within a three hour window, at nine o'clock that morning, we were open and we were ready to start accepting families. And so, like I said, it really took a whole team effort and everybody willing to step up and do whatever it took to ensure that this shelter opened. And we did an amazing job. Our, our team put that together and we were open within a three hour window, you know, ready to start accepting families to the Dunedin community. I was overwhelmed with what I was witnessing with, you know, people coming with everything of value to them on their back. Um, it was just overwhelming and they were, in such need. They were so scared. One of my jobs is to help residents move into the shelter, a back-breaking yet incredibly rewarding task helping to calm the nerves of our residents. What was amazing for me was none of us knew each other. Mm -hmm. You included Mr. Cook. I mean we knew each other, you know, hey in the hallway or other administrators mm -hmm. and it clicked like that because everybody had the same focus and the same vision of what was supposed to happen. We had a visitor who stopped by to see us, Dr. Grego, came by just to, to check with us to see, you know, what was, if there was anything else that we needed, if there's any other supports that he could provide to us, and just check on the overall well-being of, of the Pinellas County staff. So it was kind of nice and refreshing to have Dr. Grego stop by to check in on us and to really show his leadership that, you know, he cared about each and every one of us. On Sunday afternoon, the outer bands of the storm begin to hit Tampa Bay and shelter swells to over 1,100, including our four-legged friends. All right, everybody's having a good dinner? All right. <laughs> um, we built a lot of great relationships with the families that were there. And, you know, there's things that just stick in your mind. Um, I, I think the gratitude that I saw from the families who came into the shelter, that the, the outpouring of, of affection and just appreciation, um, they were blown away by the, the staff's willingness to do anything and everything that it took. Um, they were so appreciative of, of the food service team that was there, um, feeding over 1,100 people um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as well as snacks. At 4 p.m., residents get their food for the evening, and at 6 o'clock, everyone is told to stay in their rooms until the storm passes, starting a long night for sheriff's deputies and emergency staff. Everything went like clockwork. Leaks were coming in the room on the floor because of the way the wind was going. This team went and put sandbags. We got a call from next door. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't remember. I think it was Mr. Herbick. They needed our generator. So at 11:30 at night, mm -hmm. a police officer and um, Rob Zayas loaded it and brought it over. Mm -hmm. You almost didn't think. You just did. You did what needed to be done. At first light on Monday morning, everyone emerges from their rooms to assess the damage. In that room. Oh, good. We good. got a candle in the bathroom. <laughs> good, good. You guys made it through the night, okay? Yes, yes. we're fine. Everybody, everybody yes. Yeah. Thank God. Food Services provides breakfast, and residents gather their belongings to return home. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> I look back on the experience, and, and for me, and I've said this to many people, it was probably one of the most rewarding, humbling, 
um, as well as hardest task that I've ever had to do at one, at one time. It was, you know, it was exhausting, but at the same time, being able to give back to our families and, and really give that support, it, it was an amazing experience. Um, one that I'll definitely never forget. And, you know, as, as our team came together, I think we built relationships that we, we will never forget either because as we stepped up to help each other, um, we also supported each other through the whole experience. Survive the storm, man. Yes, sir. Good morning, Dunedin Eagles. It's Miss Wyatt, and I cannot tell you how excited we were to see each of your faces today. It has been a long 11 years. Teachers, days, when they got back to their classrooms, there were notes written on the board. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Crillies, for letting me use your room. Mm -hmm. um, you kept us safe. Miss Morrison got one. Mm -hmm. All Mr. over. Mr. Garner got one. There were probably five or ten teachers that had some kind of correspondence left from the families that were in their room. Thank you, Ms. Morrison, for letting us use your classroom during the hurricane. There were approximately 25 people in here. Sorry for any mess and inconvenience for your students. As we say, whatever we did, we got it back 10 times more than what we gave, and it's just amazing. Good morning. Everybody's happy? Everybody's happy? Ready to go back to class? Well, this morning was me being in the office and a family wanting to see me. So, of course, in my head, I'm thinking something happened, something's wrong. And then they bring out the flowers and the thank you notes. So everybody is happy. I think whether it's the children, the adults, all we want is normalcy back. Mm -hmm. And this is a place where everyone feels safe and that can start happening.